My friend Rick Maiucci's Kismet really doesn't represent anything particular, but it is a fly you definitely want in your fly box. The contrast between the tail, body, and bead colors has definite trout appeal. Here are the materials you will need to place some positive Kismet within your fly box. All right, so let's tie the Kismet, a great little balanced leech. Into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a Daiichi 4640 number 12. You can also use a Daiichi 4647. It's the same jig hook, it's just a black nickel finish. Cover the hook shank with tying thread and 80 olive in this instance. You have a good thread base, good traction to hold materials in place. And this is a fly that benefits from a production perspective when you're tying lots of them. So with the thread in place, I'm going to take a sequin pin, gold pin here, and onto this pin, I'm going to slide a 7 64th for a number 12 or number 14 kismet. That's my proportions for any balance fly, 7 64th for 12s and smaller. For 10s and bigger, I would be using 1 8 5 16 or even bigger. So it has to be tungsten so it balances the fly. So we want to have this experience has taught me that I can get at least two more beads on here. I am in the correct position. So we're just going to lash that down. Firm thread wraps. Really lash that sequin pin. You could, if you can't find these sequin pins, we get them at Michael's. If you can't find them, uh, you can take a standard silver sewing pin and cut it to length. But when you use the cut pins, You've got to be careful because the back edge of where you've cut it can be kind of razor sharp and cause you a little bit of headaches with thread breakage. So what we're going to do in this, at this point, if I was production tying, I would whip finish and cement the thread wraps and set that aside to dry. But since we're tying this all at once, I'm just going to leave the thread in place. Another thing you can do, if it causes you problems that uh, your gold pin doesn't match your, your orange bead, you could take some Loon Hardhead in orange and just give a couple of coats of the, just dab it right there on the pin head itself. Let that sort of dry out. It'll get tacky in a few seconds. And you can come in with your dubbing needle. See it's kind of swelled there and then you just push that forward. And, and, and another trick I do sometimes as well is I actually take a little bit of this super glue and just put a little dab like that and then push that bead forward and I'll just tack it and hold it in place for you. So there you go. Alright, the rest is just tying. We've got the chassis built. Again, this is a step you would do um, for a number of flies. You're doing six of them, I would be building these chassis, whip finish, take it off, glue it, next one, next one, next one, until I've got the required number done. You don't want to do this individually, it just prolongs the tying process. So we're just going to come back and now we're going to leave our thread hanging just back here. For the tail, we're going to use some black marabou. And for marabou, I like a thick stemmed marabou. Uh, this is a mature plume when the bird was harvested. Um, this feather was what's called a mature feather. A blood quill is an immature feather, is usually characterized by a very thin stem and very long pointy fibers. But I like these sort of bushy looking um, um, looks for my leech patterns. I just think you get the illusion of bulk without using a lot of material. So we're just going to strip off. Uh, maybe an inch or so of the material, so I'm just going to stand it up on edge like this, so the, the uh, aligns the tips and strip, and I can only strip so far, so I fold, and I roll or fold the fibers down, making a nice even stacked tail like this. And if it's a little static in the air, you can moisten your fingers a little bit. We want our tail to extend out behind the fly no longer from the sort of the pinhead to the bend of the shank. 
You don't want to make your tail too long because you will tip your fly and affect the balance. It's not all that critical um, that your fly is perfectly balanced, but you want it to sit more or less horizontal in the water when you're suspending these flies beneath an indicator. Now we're just going to trim those butts to length, and I notice I'm holding the marabou. I'm not letting it go so it doesn't get out of control, and just secure that in place, and there's your finished tail. Okay. If there's a few errant long fibers, I will allow some moderate pinching, <laughs> I call it, but I'm not a fan of pinching tails to length on my long flowing flies. I just like the tips to be in place. I think you get a better movement out of the fly. And again, that's just my personal preference. I know other tires love to pinch, and they catch probably just as many fish as I do, so it's just a personal thing. Now, for the body, we're going to use some UV Brill in olive. It's a great color. You can do different colorations. An olive brown coloration is another good one. Um, and like uh, Fritz and, and materials like this, they benefit from soaking them first. It makes them easier to work with. So off camera, I've had a length sitting in a glass of water, and I've pre-soaked it. It's just been sitting in there, and you could cut all your lengths uh, prior to and uh, have them ready to go just pre-soaking. Pull them out as you need. And we're just going to secure that right down to the base of the tail. Come up, and I'm just trying to cover up all of the butts on that black marabou so I kind of predominantly have an olive underbody just to complement uh, the olive color of the brill. And we push our thread right up to the rear of the bead, and now all we're going to do is I like to get that half wrap in there. Now I can be a bit more aggressive because I'm not going to pull it out because I've got a wrap of the material around the shank. And now we're just going to take and one wrap right in front of the other. And with my left hand, you notice it's just always in that. After each wrap, it comes in and does a little sweep. So we want to make a nice, compact, tight body. Again, just get in the habit of sweeping those fibers back. And because they're wet, they're so much easier to work with. Now, I mentioned earlier suspending this fly under an indicator, but balance flies, it's one thing I've learned in the last couple of years, is they are excellent cast and retrieve flies. Um, they've really had an effect, balance flies, on my tying for um, many fly pattern styles, and they are excellent cast and retrieves, because they're like little jigs, and when they hit the bottom, they land nose up. And even when I'm Euro nymphing or nymphing on rivers, balance flies are excellent nymphing patterns. Don't think they're a lake fly. And we're going to come right up to the back of that bead and pack it in there nice and tight. Push that bead right out in front. A couple wraps over the top. Sweep everything back. Come in with our scissors, trim off our excess. And then we're going to do our little super glue trick that you've seen on many flies. A little dab on that thread. And then just sweep everything back once again and just get that coated thread right where it needs to be into the base of the materials where it was tied off. And then a whip finish for luck. Four or five turns. And your kismet's basically done. It's just got to dry. So we still want to do a little bit more. You can put another touch. Again, this is purely, purely cosmetic. Another little dab of the orange to cover up that orange pin. I haven't found orange pins yet. If you've got them out there, you can show me. And you can also use, I know some tires have used melted mono for smaller um, flies to hold your bead in place too, and that works well. We'll have to show that on, a, on another issue. Um, a friend of mine sent that to me on another YouTube channel he's shown. I can't remember it, so I'll show it to you and give them credit, of course. So there you go, the finished kismet. A fly so named because the originator, Rick, a friend of mine, was doing really well on this fly. We all tied it up. We all get on the water. We're all having fun catching flies on this, sorry, catching fish on his fly. And Rick can't catch a thing right on his fly either. And we call that Kismet. And that's where the fly gets its name. Simple but deadly. Make sure you have a good selection of these in various sizes in your fly box. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, 
information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.